Hey guys, welcome to 90 plus my tuition app. When we rub two insulators, an electric charge is formed. When we wear a polyester cloth, our body hair is attracted towards it. The reason for it is electric charge is formed while wearing a polyester cloth. Now, these charges do not move from one point to another. They are called static charges. Let's see the definition here. The study of forces and fields of static charge is called electrostatics. Let's move on to our first chapter, that is electric charges and fields. So, what do you mean by electric charge? To understand this, let's do an experiment. We have two glass rods here. Now, we rub both the glass rods with silk. After rubbing, let's place these two glass rods together. What can you see? We can see that these two glass rods repel each other. Now, let's take another example. We have a glass rod and a plastic rod with us. Let's rub the glass rod with silk and the plastic rod with fur. Upon rubbing, what can we see? Let's place them together now. On placing them together, both of these attract each other. Now, we can conclude that there are two types of charges here. These are called the polarity of charges, which are positive charge and negative charge. Now, from this experiment, we can say that like charges repel each other and unlike charges attract each other. Now, let's see how we can check a body is charged or not. The instrument used to check if a body is charged or not is called electroscope. Now, let's see how we can make our own electroscope. In order to make an electroscope, we need to get an insulated rod and connect two gold leaf at the bottom of the insulated rod. Now, we need to take a metallic disc and place it on the top of the insulated rod. Now, the metallic disc and the gold leaf have to be kept inside a glass jar. Now, let's take a body. We need to check if this body is charged or not. Let's see how we do it. We bring the body near the metallic disc. Now, on bringing the body near the metallic disc, if the gold leaves repel, the body is charged. And if the gold leaves do not repel, the body is uncharged. Our next topic is charging by induction. In order to do that, let's take an experiment here. We have a metal spear. The metal spear is chargeless and it is placed on an insulated surface. Now, let's take a glass rod. This glass rod is negatively charged. Now, in order to do that, we need to take the glass rod and bring it near the metal surface. We don't need to touch the metal surface here. When we bring the glass rod near the metal surface, the free electrons, that is negative charge in the metal surface, repel from the glass rod and the positive charge gets attracted to the glass rod. Now, let's remove the glass rod here. On removing the glass rod, the charges rearrange themselves and the metal sphere becomes chargeless. Let us again place the glass rod near the metallic sphere. As we all know, when the glass rod is placed near the metallic sphere, the charges on the metallic sphere rearrange themselves. So, as you can see here, there are two types of charges, positive charge and negative charge. Let us now earth the negative charge particles on the metallic sphere. The negatively charged particles move to the earth and only positively charged particles are left on the metallic sphere. Now, after removing the glass rod, only positively charged particles are left. This is the method through which we can charge an uncharged body using a charged body. This method is called charging by induction. Let us now see some properties of electric charge. If we consider two charges and the distance between them is greater than its size, then they can be considered as point charges. The unit of charge is coulomb and it can be represented by the letter C. 
Now let's consider a body or a system. We have charges Q1, Q2, Q3 up to Qn. Now the total charge can be represented as Qt. Qt is the algebraic sum of the total charges present in the system. We can write it as Qt is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3 plus Qn. Now this is called the additivity of charges. Our next property is conservation of charge. In an isolated system, charge is always conserved. Let's see the definition of law of conservation of charge. Charge can neither be created nor be destroyed, but it can be transferred from one body to another. To understand this better, let's take this simple example. I have a glass rod and a silk cloth. I rub the glass rod with the silk cloth here. We know that the electrons get transferred from the glass rod to the silk cloth. Here, no new electrons are formed, no new charge is formed. It's only the transfer of electrons from the glass rod to the silk cloth. Our next property is quantization of charge. An electric charge can be represented as Q is equal to Ne, where n is an integer. The value of E is positive for a positively charged particle and the value of E is negative for a negatively charged particle. Now let's define the value of E here. E is equal to 1.602192 into 10 power minus 19 coulomb. Charge has magnitude but it doesn't have a direction. Our next topic is Coulomb's law. Now, if we consider two charges, there would be attractive or repulsive force between them. These type of forces are known as electrostatic force. The force between two charges is called Coulomb's force. Now, let's consider two charges, Q1 and Q2. The distance between the two charges is considered as R. Now, Coulomb's law describes that the force between two charges will be inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them and directly proportional to the product of the charges. So, we can write it as F is directly proportional to 1 by R square and F is directly proportional to Q1, Q2. Now, on joining both of them, we can write it as F is proportional to Q1, Q2 by R square. So, in order to remove the proportionality symbol, we need to multiply the above with the constant. The constant that we use here is k. So, we can write it as f is equal to k into q1 q2 by r square, where k is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught. We can say that epsilon naught is equal to permittivity of vacuum. The value of epsilon naught is 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 coulomb square per newton meter square. Now on rearranging the equation we can write it as f is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught into q1 q2 by r square. Our next topic is coulomb's law in vector form. Force is a vector quantity so we have to define coulomb's law in vector form. For this, let's consider two charges, Q1 and Q2. The distance between these two charges is R. Now, the force from Q1 to Q2 can be defined as F21 and the force from charge Q2 to Q1 can be defined as F12. Here, R1 and R2 are the position vector of the charges. The vector from charge Q1 to charge Q2 is written as R21, where R21 is equal to R2 minus R1. The unit vector here will be R21 cap. Secondly, let's see the vector from charge Q2 to charge Q1. Here it would be R12, where R12 is equal to R1 minus R2, 
that is minus r21 now the unit vector will be r12 cap force f21 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught q1 q2 by r square into r21 cap let us now see some properties of coulomb's law property number 1 is coulomb's law is valid for any sign of charge the second property is very important f12 is equal to negative of f21 f12 will always be equal to negative of f21